Welcome back, uh, screen printers. I thought I might do a quick epilogue to the last session uh, to just add a couple of um, bits and pieces that I think I should have put in the last uh, show around um, getting a good exposure and trying to answer that question about, you know, definitively, how do I expose my screen when I'm just getting started? And we spoke about a whole bunch of stuff. And I very briefly touched on the actual film and the printers, and I felt like I probably should spend more time uh, working that out and uh, expressing that a little bit more. So just a couple of things to add. And then also I thought, hmm, maybe it was a good idea that I actually share with you how long it takes us to expose screens and the different emulsions that we use, obviously dependent on the exposure unit that we have. So I might also try and, you know, work... Um, historically and remember what we did before so apologies I didn't put these in um, but here's a quick epilogue session for us if you're uh, if you're getting going in screen printing um, the first thing then is to have good film positives um, we cannot really uh, in spite of everything I've told you if you have a poor film positive um, and by that I mean um, something where the black ink on your film is not dense enough then it doesn't matter what you do by way of exposure, you're going to get uh, poor results and you're going to find it hard um, to blow out those stencils. So you need a good printer, and you, which will be an inkjet printer, not a laser. Do not make the mistake of trying to print on acetates and stick them together and all that kind of stuff. That's a nightmare and will only produce a thin film anyway. Um, so you really do want an inkjet printer it doesn't have to be sophisticated and it doesn't have to be expensive. The printer that we use for that, and this will go up to A3 size, so you know we, we print film positives on A4 here and we print them on A3 and we print them on wide format um, 610 mil wide uh, film as well on a roll on a different printer. But the printer we use for the A4 and the A3 is the Canon IX 6860 it's really good uh, it's inexpensive I think you're looking at maybe a couple of hundred dollars um, it's pretty cheap to run it's a CMYK printer but it also has a photo black ink cartridge and that's important um, it works with things like a separation studio NXT uh, AccuRip if you're using uh, the rip just on its own um, and, it, you know, straight out of um, Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop or whatever you're using there. Um, and the key to this is that um, it's a wide format printer. It takes A3, but that it has a photo black print cartridge, not just the standard CMYK pigment inks. A photo black ink cartridge is to print photo like images on glossy paper. And... Um, that's going to give you the thickest layer of ink and excuse me and also the darkest ink you can get and if you start there you'll get straight away and inexpensively to this layer that a lot of professional screen printers are on already it used to be the artisan epson artisan 1430 and before that the 1410 but they're they're impossible to get hold of now they're a discontinued model so we really do recommend this canon ix6860 it's becoming an industry standard and it's cheap so um, get into that get good film um, don't buy cheap film make sure that you're going to a good stockist in australia for good film we would recommend leapfrog ink spot speak to shane down there he's very helpful very knowledgeable he's an ex-screen printer himself and understands the industry uh, get good film from him uh, experiment with a4 and a3 because they are expensive uh, typically you're looking at a dollar and two dollars a sheet and so we use a4 if it's just a little less left chest there's no point in using a big uh, sheet just for something like that so a good printer good um, ink um, let's just say photo black ink and uh, a good film uh, next and last thing before i talk about our exposure times is what are you outputting your um, film positives from so we've spoken about what it's going to the printer what is it coming out from on your computer 
And in most cases, people will either use Photoshop or um, Adobe Illustrator. And they're very different. And our advice is if you can afford it and you can uh, go through the learning curve, because it is a bit different, that you use Adobe Illustrator every time. And there's a basic reason for that. Um, Adobe Photoshop, which of course is a fantastic um, product. It's very mature, been around for a long time. Uh, it's the, um, the result of lots of development. It's for photos <laughs> and it's for visual looking on the screen and it's for CMYK, high res printing, but it's a raw, um, as to say it's a, rap, a raster file um, that is outputted. Now a raster image is made up of pixels. So like it or not, you can try and make the edges of your image super sharp, but it will still output with a rough, gentle, um, smooth edge, which is not what we want. We want a hard edge. Now, you might not notice that to the naked eye, but if you're printing a half tone and a high mesh count of film, um, then you will notice it. Now, we have a, a device which is uh, for looking at jewels, actually, a jeweler uses it to look at diamonds and so on and it's just kind of like a tiny microscope with a light and if you were to use one of those on a rastered image output to a, an inkjet you would see that it's very um, serrated the edges are very serrated because that's the pixels a vector system like adobe illustrator doesn't do that um, it, it allows you to scale images um, very easily and um, the, the, the resolution doesn't change because it's not rastered. There are no pixels. It's super cool. And so if you want to output from that, you'll need to learn how to use Adobe Illustrator and obviously you need to have Adobe Illustrator. And um, But it's not that difficult, but you will get a much better image film, uh, ink positive on your film using that. So I'd uh, recommend giving that a go if you can. Well, I hope those um, additional definitive variables add to the overall um, picture around how you ought to be looking at exposing your screens. And I thought I'd just add one thing because I, I didn't really give you this and it might be helpful. So what is it like for us? How many minutes, seconds, etc. do we expose for? What emulsions do we actually use and what exposure units do we use? Um, and to give you some timings around that. Obviously it may be different to you based on the variables I gave you last time and the two that I've just expressed this morning. Um, but it, it may be helpful. We've, we've gone through three different emulsions in our time, um, and, you know, they get gradually better and better, to be honest. But I'm just going to comment on two of them for now. I mentioned in the last show um, that it's, it's good to kind of use a dual-cure emulsion to start with. It gives you a wider window of exposure and allows you to kind of uh, dial in your times more easily um, you know, gradually, so you can work out what the outer and the inner extremes are on that. And that's Kaiwakol Poly Plus. And we used to use the SWR Red, and we'd buy that by the gallon. We'd buy several gallons in one go. And uh, that's uh, an, emul an emulsion, hmm, easy for me to say, an emulsion that you add a sensitizer to, you add the Diazo 2. And that's the bit that's, you know, the bit that matters. And so you have a little container that comes with it. You know, we used to half fill it with water, put the lid on, give it a really big shake, tip it in, and then fill it up again, or half fill it again with water, give it a shake and tip in the residue. And then we um, actually use a drill with a, now my culinary knowledge is somewhat limited, but one of those things that people use to make cream fluffy, you know, that, that cooking utensil that spins around really fast. Yeah, if only I knew what that was called. Um, and we just put one of those in the end of the drill and we just mix that thing until you cannot see um, any um, of the light colored emulsion left in it. it when you put the Diazo in it, it, it changes the color and makes it darker. And uh, we pour that into our scoop coder and um, coat the screens one and one. That's important you understand that to get the timings right. So just coating on one side, outside, let's say, and then coating on the inside and uh, putting it up to dry. Now, if we use that emulsion, let's say on a 43T, 
okay um, and let's go through the three main types of exposure units so if you're using a halogen lamp that is let's say a foot and a half away from the actual glass um, I would say with that emulsion and a one and one um, scoop on each side of the screen you're looking at around 10 12 maybe even 15 minutes to get that right and now if that isn't working if that's overexposing or underexposing what you can do obviously is increase or decrease the time you expose or obviously you can lift the um, the light further away from the image or bring it in closer if you do that just bear in mind that that's quite those lights are quite targeted they have a broad um, overall spectrum of of light that you know lights up a whole room but obviously if you bring it closer you're, you're narrowing that and intensifying it so be careful you don't bring it too close um, it's it's far enough away to to cover the whole image uh, if you were to run the very same setup on um, a metal halide where there's probably two even two and a half feet of gap between the bulb and the screen we used to run that on a 43T that would typically take and this was on a 2300 watt metal halide bulb that would take seven minutes to expose on dual cure on um, uh, an inf sorry an LED unit so UV and LED we use one of those now super quiet super quick and nice and digital as well um, that would take on a 43T with the red emulsion that I've expressed already about a minute and a half so a lot less time so that gives you a lot to play with in terms of timings the other emulsion that we recommend and that we use um, all the time now is the green emulsion. They all have different colors. We used to use um, the Ulano orange, but we prefer um, the QX1 Ulano, which is green. Um, that's a fast exposing um, emulsion, and we use it for a number of reasons. One, it exposes very quickly. Uh, two, it doesn't need you to mix up and put diazo in it so it saves us time and three a lot of people don't know this it washes out much quicker than any other emulsion if you've got a dip tank or whatever chemical you're putting on that you'll find that that green will come off quicker than the red not a myth it's a true truth um, and if we go back and, and use that on the metal hell I've never tested that on a on a um, standard um, bulb from Bunnings but if you go back to a metal halide um, you will find that that takes probably two minutes to expose for a 43T on the LED exposure unit it takes 20 sorry it takes 30 seconds for us a 77T is 20 seconds and a 90T would probably run at 20 as well and anything higher we, we would just go down so 39T at the other end of the scale much more open mesh, a lot more emulsion on it. We probably run that for a minute and a half to two minutes, actually, I would suggest on that. So obviously that's much quicker and the window, the margin of error is much smaller. But your number one indicator on that is when you take it to the washout booth, remember this, then you spray it on the inside, you're going to find that it's it's scummy. If it's underexposed, you're going to rub your, run your finger across it and find that it's slightly scummy sorry one of my colleagues is coming to work which is great um, and that's if you, if you have that and it's it's runny and you can feel it on your fingers and it, it feels kind of oily and scummy you know that that screen is underexposed if it's not like that that's exactly what you want but also you want to be able to blow at that stencil so if it's not scummy and you're not able to blow at that stencil then you over have overexposed the screen so that's that's a really good indicator to find it out and look you don't want it scummy because if it's scummy it's basically the inside of that screen is the emulsion is just running off which gives you a thinner um, um, stencil which you don't want you want a thick stencil because you want to get as much ink through that as you can but also you're running against the bare screen and it will wear out it'll pop through particularly if you're using an automatic press, which 
most people starting off won't be using, but even manually you'll find that it, it wears out on a, a big run. Okay, well there were two other things that I felt um, I really ought to add. Um, happy to take questions on that. And um, yeah, happy screen printing. Thanks for listening. Screen, screen printing. printing. Uh.